Great. I wanted to ask you, this goes back to the John Ash case. I've been go reviewing the, uh, the, you know, the, the charge sheet, and, and it seemed like an opportune time to ask the following, which is that it describes in some detail the, the, the purchase of a document from the UN Secretariat. It describes uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Lorenzo paying John Ash to inquire with, with an official known as UN, UN Secretary to Official Number One to reissue a document about the Macau Conference Center uh, with the name of Mr. Englap Seng's company in it and the notation that it was revised for technical reasons. And since this was filed in October, I wanted you to state, has the Secretariat, totally outside of this audit, which we don't know when it's going to be finished, determined who the individual was that's referred to and what's been done in that case? Uh, I have no comments on the particulars of the case. What I can tell you is that uh, the audit, both ours and UNDP's, uh, should be done shortly, and I know will be made uh, public. But I guess what I'm saying, given, given that this is, it, it describes in great detail, gives the date of the email, it would be in incredibly easy for the UN to determine who it was that interfaced as with I, John as I said, and changed uh, the document. There was, there, was, there was an audit being conducted. Uh, looking into the into the issue, if there's anything that needs to come out of it, and further investigation, it will be done. The way I've heard the audit described is uh, it's the interface of two NGOs with the UN well, system, whereas this I, describes I, I, John Matthew, Ash calling Matthew, a guy. I, I, I hear what you're saying, right. and I'm trying to get you to listen to what I'm saying. I'm so that's it. I don't understand. I just don't well, understand I, how. Well, I'm, I'm, keep... I'm telling. I've given you an answer. Okay. Okay. And it definitely. Uh, handles the media and he will do whatever he, he feels he needs, uh, he needs to do. There is no policy uh, per se on any of these issues that you raised. But related to that, there's a, related to that, I noticed today having attended now two photo ops that there's a, a clearly an, either an interview or some kind of a documentary or, or something larger from Phoenix TV of this, with the Secretary General. And I wanted to know, it seemed to be that, th that in some of these incidents, the, the, the crew that's following Ban Ki-moon's every mo movement today is given uh, rights greater than journalists that are just Photographing. Yes. Okay. What, so, so who decides that? What, what exactly? Well, I mean, Ma that? Matthew, I'm not. You I'm know, uh, uh, there is. Um, I think most journalists would expect uh, someone in my position not to share what projects or interviews they're doing on. It is our decision to decide what interviews to grant, uh, what documentary filmmakers to work with, one way or another. Um, that's but, it. It's our decision. I mean, I, I don't. It's not. It's not something for for discussion. We don't share. You know, my question I, is, what's the right of normal, of regular, you know, non-resident correspondent journalists to go to photo ops? Because I went to a photo op today it's, and you're I was, right, it's I was to told by you're, security, you're right please is be to nice. Cover. You're and right. I just is think it's inappropriate. Well, Isn't I think, that inappropriate? I think it's, it's always nice to be nice. Yeah, and but I why think, am I told not to be nice and these guys are in the residence? Yes. Thank you, I'm staff. I'm always told to be nice. Go ahead. Thank I'm you, staff. I'm trying to be nice. 